The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to this uh, Remembrance Sunday as we, we remember the faithful departed of this parish uh, who um, answered the call of, to, to resp you know, the call to duty as it were from their country um, and also those who lost their lives in the pursuit of that call. Um, we also remember the faithful departed of, of this parish. Uh, their names will be read aloud. Um, all of them are inscribed on the walls around uh, this, this place. Um, also, we are uh, blessed to have with us the, the Gates family, uh, a man whose name is inscribed on our walls, and uh, a memorial gift will be placed um, in the, the service of the church uh, to remember him in perpetuity. So welcome to church. This is a consecrated space uh, of love and hope, of safety and forgiveness. We are all hungry, and yet we are food for the hungry. We are thirsty, and yet are living water for the thirsty. We are so glad that you are here. You are all invited by God. You are all beloved by God. Come in, we've been waiting for you. Welcome to church. Everything you need to participate in the service today is printed in the bulletin you should have in your hand. Please do respond with everything printed in bold. Let us come to God in prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no know, secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A 
selection from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me will never be driven away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now please be seated. So like a good shepherd, Jesus promises to lose nothing of all that has been given to him. Elsewhere, we hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. Our Lord Jesus Christ didn't say that he was a good plowman or a good stable boy. So, what is it about sheep that they are the illustration of choice for Jesus in speaking with his critics those long ago days? So, my extended family's farm operations were a pretty mixed and very modest operation. And, and although we had lots of different animals and crops in the ground, I gather, as best I can, that we never once had a sheep on our entire 100-acre plot. I'm told, though, that sheep are pretty stinky and smelly, uh, like the, the four days dead and stinky type of stinky from last week. Um, so what then was our Lord saying about us and his relationship to us, calling himself our shepherd and comparing us to sheep? As the only son of God, Jesus would have had a pretty keen understanding of human nature and would have known that there is lots about the human condition that readily compares to the fetid and smelly life of a sheep. And yet God, in Christ Jesus, calls himself our shepherd, the tender of us, prepared to lay down his life for us, 
Indeed, humanity has found itself in many a stinky mess over the centuries. And we're drawn here, some of us, to remember some of that. From the rank trenches of Passchendaele and Vimy Ridge to the dusty mess of El Alamein, to the laborious and hot invasion of Sicily, where my great uncle is buried, from the catastrophe that was Dieppe to the beachheads of Normandy on D-Day, and recalling, perhaps more recently, the deserts of the Sinai and the Golan Heights, also those forward operating bases in Afghanistan and the soupy mess of the deforested and storm-ravaged Haiti. Indeed, humanity has put itself in a lot of fetid and smelly situations in the very lifetimes of the people in this room. And yet God, the creator of all, who formed us in our mother's wombs and knows our going out and our coming in, loves and tends us despite all of it. There is nothing of war or violence or man-made disaster that is dear to the heart of God, nothing. God's heart breaks with ours at our inhumanity to one another. And yet, God, that great shepherd of the flock, continues to call us home. God holds open the gate and welcomes us in with loving arms. God goes out in search of those of us who stray. Humanity has done much to foul up human relationships and it even sought to destroy great tribes of humanity and great swaths of creation. And yet, God, that source of all that is good and just in our world longs for us, longs for relationship with us. God continually inserts himself into the human experience and tries to show us a better way. From the burning bush and the pillar of cloud in the desert speaking to our ancestor Moses to the prophets of old, God has sought to steer humanity to the paths of right action and right relationship. From the birth the ministry, the death, the resurrection, and ascension of his only son, Jesus Christ, God seeks to teach us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to love God with all that we are. God, whose actions opened a path of salvation for eternal reunion with our very creator, an eternal experience of the love of God in the very presence of God. Our call today is to walk through the gate held open by our Good Shepherd. In some important ways, and very much like sheep, we just act without thought and without weighing the consequences. The Great Shepherd, God, yet holds open the gate of his loving arms to us. God wants us. God wants you an integral member of the flock to be with God. And without weighing our merits and ever ready to pardon our offenses. So whatever has come before this day, if it was on a foreign battlefield or in a schoolyard fight, if it is a slight against your family or a cruelty to your neighbor, God in Christ Jesus, through the vehicle of the Holy Church, stands ready to welcome you home in repentance of what you may have done. The, God, the peace of God, the very peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, is ours for the enjoying. Amen.
I invite you to rise as you are able. And together, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. I invite you to respond, as printed in the bulletin, to Lord in your mercy with Hear Our Prayer. O oh God, the King of Saints, we praise and glorify your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in your faith and fear. For the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and for all your other righteous servants, known to us and unknown, and we pray that, encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honor of your name and the good of your church and people. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, the Lord of all, your Son commanded us to love our enemies and to pray for them. Lead us from prejudice to truth. Deliver us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge, and enable us to stand before you reconciled through your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort and of the sad and the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your people who are in any trouble. Grant to everyone in distress mercy, relief, and refreshment. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. 
For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and is infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us now confess our sins, confident of God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share with each other a sign of God's peace without getting any closer to each other.
Today, among the gifts offered uh, at the altar, uh, we rededicate a memorial gift offered to the glory of God and in loving memory of George Edward Gates. Standing as you are able, let us pray. Gracious and righteous Lord, we are united in the love of Jesus Christ. Accept all we offer you this day and bring us with your faithful people who have gone before us into this eternal glory, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to stir serve you night and day. And beholding your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe. To complete his work in the world and bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Father, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember Harry Barr, Thomas Welch, Frederick Attune, Forrester Ambry, Brian Henderson, Joseph Hallowell, Arthur Mercer, F. Charles Beers, Maurice Henderson, Bernard Morton, Arnold Smiter, Arloff Hewson, Richard Paget, Frederick Humble, Samuel Rigby, C.C.E. Thompson, Frederick Addy, George Folland, Thurbert Heathers, Charles Hudson, Cecil Jones, A. Jeffries, O. Mitchell, W.A. Mason, Angus McKenzie, John McKenzie, Henry MacDonald, Wilfred Medcalf, Frank Marsden, George Newman, Robert Bennett, George Cooper, Ralph Crew, Colbrook Ellis, Harry Oliver, Merritt Powell, Frank Pullen, C. Scrimshire, Charles Siebert, Charles Stevens, Douglas Townsend, A. Adams, F. Adams, N. W. Cook, W. Cool, S. Cowley, W. R. Darling, E. Fernandez, W. Gaines, George Edward Gates, R. M. Gibbs, H. M. Graham, W. Graham, H. H. Healy, W. H. Hindley, D. W. Howell, G. Kennedy, J. V. Lawrence, J. D. McCrary, W. McMillan, H. Murchison, E. B. Norbury, J. A. Parker, R. Pelly, R. W. Poles, R. H. Rolfe, F. Stiles, W. Van Deerdesen, W. Walker, S. A. Waugh, D. White, and J. A. Wilkes and the faithful of all saints who have died or been buried this year, Dolores Foreman, Jim Fowler, Robin Peetle, Mary Fretz, Pat Lowe, Luba Bridge, Virginia Westlake, June Arthurs, Agnes Charbonneau, James Duffield, Marjorie Armbrust, Glenn Pinsonneau, all your faithful servants and our friends and forebearers, and who now enjoy their rest in you. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and to give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated while I finish the preparations for the distribution of communion. Uh, just a few notes about that. Um, I will meet you at the, the bottom of the chancel steps with the pedestal with the white tablecloth on it um, and invite you to come forward one household at a time or individually. Uh, depending on your, your own piety, but uh, please do maintain your social distance from those who aren't in your bubble. Um, and uh, please do keep your mask on while you're coming forward through the center aisle and return to your seat by the side aisles. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll be right there.
Standing as you are able, let us pray. God of love, may the death and resurrection of Christ, which we celebrate in this Eucharist, bring us with the faithful departed into the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And just a couple of announcements uh, before we come to the conclusion of our worship. So I do invite you to be seated. Um, note at the back of your uh, worship service today a brief um, service of blessing for our cemetery, uh, which will immediately follow our worship service here. So please do follow me outside and um, we will pray over um, our cemetery it, just this year. It has finalized uh, the licensing process, so we're very excited about uh, the prospects of, of uh, being able to continue to inter uh, for eternity um, our loved ones uh, here in the garden at All Saints. Uh, so we will pray over the garden and those we have buried um, in, in it over the long 30-odd uh, years that it has been uh, available. So follow uh, me outside and we'll walk through that, but bring your bulletin with you. Uh, also at the back of your bulletin, you'll note uh, an Advent study series coming up. Uh, if you would like to participate uh, with the book in hand, uh, please do register um, at the email address uh, in the poster and also an upcoming event, event with the uh, Ken M. Indian Friendship Center of Windsor uh, featuring uh, the Honorable Murray Sinclair, uh, former chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, it will be an electronic event, so uh, you can participate from anywhere in the world, basically. So uh, please do register for that. Um, at this time, um, I would like to uh, invite uh, April Gates forward to explain uh, just briefly what, uh, what we've been up to and who um, her ancestor George is. Can I remove my mask? For the Gates family, many of whom are here today, All Saints Church has been our home parish for generations. Many of us were baptized here, confirmed here, married here, and buried here. Many of our family served here as parish servers, as choir members. Even in the kitchen, I believe my grandmother, Emily Gates, has a plaque um, in All Saints Kitchen here recognizing her service. Because of this background, we felt it was very fitting to gift another significant piece of our history to this church. We are so grateful for the opportunity to do so. This has been quite the journey. Back in March of 2019, I was going through some of my father, Bob Gates's. Uh, belongings, and I came across a letter that was written in 1956 addressed to my grandparents, James and Emily. The letter was from Reverend Arthur Peach of St. Martin's Church in Calgary, thanking my grandparents for their gift of a missile stand. This was beautifully crafted by a Calgary cabinet maker in memory of their son George, who died in World War II in France, August 28, 1944. George had been stationed in Calgary with the Canadian Grenadier Guards 22nd Canadian Armed Regiment and attended St. Martin's. I happened to share this letter that I had discovered with a church friend of mine in Guelph, where I live. To our collective amazement, my friend, Terry Peach, told me that his father was an Anglican minister in Calgary in the 50s. Reverend Arthur Peach was indeed my friend's father who had penned the letter to my grandparents in 1956. And also the Peach family moved later on in that decade to Windsor, and I believe they came to this church as well. So all of this encouraged me to track down the missile stand in Calgary. I was on a mission. 
I connected with the current minister, Reverend Natasha Brubaker, who began to search for the missile stand that she believed was in deep storage after St. Martin's Church had relocated. This search, which began in March 2019, ended in December 2020, when I received an email informing me that the lost had been found and that Reverend Brubaker had been given permission to repatriate it to the Gates family and to our historic home parish of All Saints Church. Reverend Clifford and I then began communicating. The Gates family is overjoyed to be given the opportunity to repatriate this missile stand in honor of Trooper George Edward Gates. He has returned home. Uh, thank you for the honor of, of uh, hosting. Uh, it, it won't go into deep storage. <laughs> um, um, and uh, there is a plan afoot to use it as our uh, Lenten uh, missile stand uh, because we normally take away all of the, the shiny decorations and have wooden decorations and so it will suit that use very well. Thank you for entrusting it to us. Um, and also today at 12.30, Art will be hosting a walk at, remind me please, Ojibwe Park at the end of Matchett Street um, on the other side of the freeway. Yes, perfect. Um, so join Art and Gordon and uh, the walking ministry uh, there. Also uh, this afternoon, beginning at noon, um, we will be gathering um, items for uh, people who are street involved um, to, to support them through what uh, is variously being reported as either a really cold winter or, or a not. It, they, they can't seem to agree, but uh, they will need support through the winter, whatever the weather brings them. Uh, so please do bring uh, items uh, that would be appropriate for, small items that would be appropriate for supporting uh, people who are unhoused uh, this winter. At this time, I invite uh, Reverend Bev forward to give us a blessing and invite you to rise. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. So at the conclusion of the, um, the dismissal, um, I'll walk out the, the center aisle and invite you to, to join with me. Um, but please do uh, stay. I, I'll, I'll wait at the back for uh, the conclusion of the postlude, uh, which is a special treat today from David. And Sarah, thank you for your ministry of music today as well. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.